Hello, all you wonderful people, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. I hope you are doing amazing, and I hope you are having a great day or night wherever you are. Welcome to the first part of the Goth Family Makeover. There are going to be two separate parts because the raw recording was over an hour long, and I also didn't really know how to do like a cool thumbnail with like eight people total because there's the four of them before and then four of them after. I didn't know how I was going to do that. I'm not that great at photo manipulation, so. But yeah, I had a lot of fun doing the makeovers for the family. I do want to do like as many townie makeovers as I possibly can because it is just so much fun to me and I enjoy it so much. If this is the first time you're seeing a townie makeover from me, hello! Nice to have you here. When I do my townie makeovers, I never adjust any of the facial features. The only thing I will adjust is like brow shape. If I do like a CC eyebrow and the shape is like a little bit off, like a little too angular or something, then I'll change like the brow angle. But other than that, I do not change any of the physical features. I kind of do this just to showcase what custom content can really do because I have noticed sometimes the EA townies will just look kind of weird but once you put custom content on them they immediately look so much better so I just want to showcase like that these aren't ugly townies per se they just need custom content as we as we all do honestly. But yeah we are starting off with Bella Goth. I had so much fun doing her makeover. You will see I actually used Max match eyelashes for her which is so weird because I don't really do that. I usually use more alpha eyelashes for my sims but I had recently discovered a bunch of Maxis match eyelashes for download and I downloaded all of them and I was like okay I have to try these out they look so cool and it's not that I'm like necessarily against like the EA eyelashes that come in game I just think it's nice to have some variety which is why I actually have a mod that disables the eyelashes on EA eye presets so that is really nice. <laughs> but since I hadn't actually played with any like Maxis Match eyelashes in a long, long time, I decided to try and skip the alpha and do some Maxis Match eyebrows on Bella. I did end up sticking with the Kajiko eyelashes for Mortimer, which are the eyelashes that I typically use just because they are so well done and they're just kind of like cult classic if you get what I mean. But yeah, with Bella, I tried to keep the essence of her the same, like when it came to her makeup, I tried to do the same tones, so like a kind of bluish eyeshadow. I did like a berry lip, and I just tried to keep like the same general vibe that she had. And of course, I kept the classic red dress. I just changed it up. <laughs> it's more alpha now, and it's like a knitted turtleneck dress, I guess. Looking back at the recording, I now notice it kind of looks like a virgin killer sweater dress. Um, that was not intentional. <laughs> I was just going for a red dress. Uh, don't come for me for that. But yeah, and then I just kept Mortimer kind of the same. I still wanted him to look more old, I guess. So I kept like a lot of like lines and wrinkles in his face because I, I see a lot of people tend to make their elderly sims look younger and not like they're old. And like I'm not saying Mortimer is old because he's still an adult, but I just wanted him to show his age a little bit. And then I also just gave him a super, I was gonna say super chilled and relaxed outfit, but it's not, it's not that relaxed. But it's a little bit more like laid back when in compared to his other outfit, which was just like a full on suit set. I tried to keep it a little bit more laid back, but now he just kind of looks like a mafia boss. So I don't know if I succeeded really. <laughs> but yeah, that is the goth adults makeover. I am going to be doing Doing a separate video where I do Cassandra and Alexander, so don't worry, that video will be coming. I did not skip out on them, I promise. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's been kind of going on in my life. I really like just to be able to like speak to you guys and kind of just I guess connect. It's really fun and it feels more like a family this way and that's like my goal is I want us to be like a family where we all just, I don't know, I just I just think it's cute. So in one of my last videos, I believe it was the stage video, I spoke about how I have been dealing with something called cubital tunnel syndrome. It is very similar to carpal tunnel syndrome but it affects a different nerve in the body and basically you get all the same symptoms as carpal tunnel syndrome. You get numbness, tingling, weakness, pain. You get all of that, but it's more centralized in like your pinky and ring finger. And so I started having like flare-ups of this back maybe like a year and a half to two years ago. I think it really started when I started like taking art more seriously and I was just drawing for hours every single day in a very uncomfortable position where my arm was constantly bent. Of course, I don't know if this is really like the cause of my cubital tunnel syndrome, but that's just what I'm hypothesizing. And then I had a flare-up that just it lasted 
lasted like a month. It was absolute agony. I couldn't do anything. I was having muscle atrophy. It was really, really bad. <laughs> and I went to the doctor and they scheduled me for something called a nerve conduction study as well as an electromyography. Basically, these tests aim to measure the electrical signals in your nerves and muscles and just kind of diagnose you with a specific condition, if that makes sense. Because of my symptoms, we pretty much knew it was cubital tunnel syndrome, but we had to just make sure it wasn't another nerve causing this. So I had to do that today, which was so bad. <laughs> I really don't want to scare anyone who might have to get this in the future because I, I guess it was tolerable but it's just it's not something you would actively seek out and participate in if you get what I mean. Basically they would put these electrodes on my like hand and arm and then they used this like little machine thing and it would fire electricity through my nerves and then the electrodes would register like the nerve signal or whatever and my hand would just jolt. If you have gotten shocked like by a doorknob whenever you like wear socks it was like that but like amplified it was bad and the neurologist was like it's just gonna be a little little it's just gonna be a little shock and then it shocked and like my whole arm jerked and I was like that's not a little shock please and then I had to do the electromyography where they basically take like these needles that are like I don't know how they do it but it's like it can sense electricity basically and they would put it in your muscles and like record your muscle activity and you could actually hear it which was actually really really cool like I was like in pain while they were doing it because there was like a needle in my arm that he was kind of moving around so I was in pain but I could hear my muscle and like he would have my muscle rest and then have me flex the muscle and it would just get louder it, it was really cool actually like now that I'm thinking back at it that's that's actually a really cool experience to like hear your freaking muscle like that's pretty cool but yeah we did those two tests and he told me my results which came back as cubital tunnel syndrome which we were not surprised but he says I have a mild to moderate case and there is damage around the elbow meaning that tomorrow or today for you all because I believe I'm uploading this tomorrow um I am going to have to schedule my surgery which I am not excited for uh can we not not <laughs> like part of me is like really angry that I have to get another surgery if you don't know I've had six surgeries in the past so it's kind of like a thing I'm not scared of the surgery I'm scared of just you know I won't be able to do anything because my arm will be in a splint and it is my dominant hand so <laughs> I am basically gonna be useless and then on the other hand I'm also really excited because at least after I'm done healing then I won't have to deal with this again like dealing with this the past like month and a half has been absolute hell hell. I, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. It It's really, really, I, I don't know the word, like debilitating, I guess, to not even be able to do things that you love. And it was so bad at a point that I couldn't even pick up like plates with my hand. Like I had to use my other hand. It was, it was bad. But yeah, I am in pain because of the studies, like my, all of my muscles and they're just sore because obviously I had electricity pumped through my body to stimulate them. So now they're just a little bit angry which uh, kind of sucks for them, <laughs> but they'll, they'll have to get over it. And yeah, again, tomorrow I am going to the doctors to figure out what my surgery date is. I know when you have surgeries, you can't really pick a date. You kind of just have to do what the doctors have available, but I'm really hoping I get something either at the end of the month or at the beginning of August because I really want to be done with this, first of all, but also just because I want to be able to be healed in time for my first day of college. I start college August 23rd, I believe, and it is my first year of college, actually. Um, I'm super nervous, but also kind of excited, and I am doing it all online. So you can see my issue with if I'm in a splint, how am I supposed to function? Like, I can't use my dominant hand, so I'm gonna have to use a mouse, but then I'm gonna have to teach myself how to use my left hand with a mouse, and I'm gonna have to find a mouse that works for left hand. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little complicated. So I'm hoping we get a, my surgery as soon as possible, fingers crossed. Of course, again, I can't really magically make that a thing. But overall, it's been a pretty stressful month, but I think 
I am slowly on the path to recovery, which I am so excited for. I feel like my head's a little bit clearer now that I've got that awful test out of the way and now that I'm about to find out when I can have my surgery and have this over with, it's relieving. I feel like my mind is clearer. I feel like I can see positively now and think more optimistically, which is always nice. But yeah, this create a sim is now drawing to a close. It's a little bit of a longer create a sim than I usually do, um, partially because, you know, there's two sims, but also partially because I was talking and I didn't stop talking and now I'm seeing that this is like 11 minutes in. So I am going to go now. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please stay safe out there and take care of yourself. I appreciate you. You are so loved and needed in this world and I hope you know that. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye!